Okay, what's up? Let's go wide screen here. So uh, the expansion valve that I rigged, what, two, three weeks ago? I brazen in this Schrader valve to put R22 into the sensing bulb. I first it tried to crush. It actually worked and modulated for the last like two, three weeks. Uh, the other day I just went up to my suction line outside. I even checked it. It was like, wow, it's got good superheat and everything. Still good. I guess I jinxed myself because <laughs> yesterday it quit. So, uh, while I was out of town, but I came home and it was clamped down and frosted. So, I tried to put a little bit more R22. You know, I still had like a almost empty jug just sitting up here with a hose from when I charged it. And it started working for just a little bit, but I was goofed up. And that power went off on us last night as I was doing this. And that sucked. And couldn't work on it power was off all the way until about 2 30 in the morning after the electrical utility company replaced a transformer on our street what luck is that huh so and more bad luck is the fact that i'm almost ready to replace this air handler and then that gave out so now i'm not ready to change air handler today when we get to the weekend or something or later in the week because i didn't even sleep last night and I had to go to work, but I got off a little early today. Just gonna get this running. So here's the, uh, there's the expansion valve I just got out. Right there, it's been in for four or five years, whatever that was where I got this house. Shortly after I moved in, I put these two expansion valves in on these ghetto Goodman units. So now I just swaged a piece of 3 8 copper, swaged on each end, just to put back in place where that thermal expansion valve is. Couldn't find the piston for this one. It probably fell down in the insulation up here. That piston over there and that one was laying there, but it was a little small. But I looked it up and it said 80 to 82 or 80 to 83 or whatever was the one for this, for a four ton condenser with a four ton air handler. Goodman, so that's what I got. Oops. And here it is, I got an 80 that I was happened to be in my old stash. I mean, how often do you use pistons anymore, guys? It said like 080 or whatever. Pretty good size opening. So I'm gonna put that. Oops. We're gonna put that in right here. And just, I guess I should. I've never made a video about pistons really, but the way pistons work is the inner hole is your fixed restrictor, and the refrigerant, um, whatever flow it goes normally. So for cooling, the refrigerant liquid goes this way. So it pushes through this way, and you want the seat to push against the seat in here, make all the refrigerant go down the middle. But this is a heat pump, right? So basically when it reverses direction, you don't want it to restrict here. You want it to restrict at the piston outside. So these have where they, they come out of the seat uh, just a little bit and then refrigerant uh, could go around the seal right here and flow through all these little holes, these little slots. So it looks like five slots. So refrigerant goes through the middle and around it when it's in heating mode. And in heating mode, the restrictor outside is a lot more than this. So this doesn't even really drop pressure at all. And the same thing for uh, in cooling mode. The one on side doesn't, um, it put, pushes out of its seat and it doesn't restrict. So I'm gonna put this together, I'm gonna tighten that up, put my core in there. I got a little bit of nitrogen that should be, yep. See, I did braise that with nitro. It's going through while I had that off and nitro was pushing through here just to displace the, ox the oxygen and carbon. I'm going to tighten that up, put the core in, go outside, do a pressure test, evacuation. And I should be back up and running uh, on the original piston type metering device and have some cooling until it's convenient for me to come up here and rip out this unit. I'm kind of thinking of uh, lifting this unit at some point up here and then getting underneath there and putting a wooden platform or something down, perhaps. To just That way when I put the new one in, I just slap it up on the wood. Uh, shelf that I'll make. I don't know why they don't do that. They d used to do that where we used to live, but they just do everything cheap with, the, with these metal bars and the angle iron. So, yeah, that's what it's going on. Alright. Dang, I'm tired. Just after noon. I didn't even leave my job in Scottsdale till 10, so it means I did all this in like an hour or so. Evacuated pulled out the TXV, welded in the bypass, put the piston in, pressure tested uh, for five minutes. <laughs> Evacuated, 
pushed the refrigerant back in that I took out with the recovery jug. So I pulled out with the recovery jug, put it back in, sucked that all the way down. And just opened all the valves, getting ready to turn this bitch back on. This cost our fingers. First time it's ran with a piston metering device in years. The rest is started, that's a good thing. This compressor, when it overheats on thermal, it stays off for like an hour or two hours. It really sucks. And it tripped within like 15, 20 minutes of the uh, power coming back on at 2.30 in the morning. So there's nothing I can really do about it. About 1.30 on that line there. Still measuring hotter than the pressure, so it's gonna take a few seconds. Superheat 47 and dropping. Suction at 67. See, it doesn't flood through as much on a hot load like it does, you know, with the TXV. Now there's an 80 piston. It said 80 to 82 or 80 to 83, something like that. I'll maybe I'll throw up the, the what I found. I'll throw it up on the screen. So it might be just a pinch on the small side being an 80, but that'll work. That'll get me through until I change out the unit. I can already. I'm already satisfied with the pressures already. Well, there's 80 inside because the downstairs one's just been pretty much running non-stop there. Super heat's down to 41. A lot of heat coming out, so it's still good, man. So, I, I put back all the refrigerant I pulled out, so it's charged exactly as it was with the TXV, and I probably had, you know, closer to 10 degrees subcooling, at least last time I ever charged it. It's getting down into the 30s now. Suction's 69, kind of hanging out 69. 264 on the liquid line. No subcooling, I guess. 122 on the probe, 121. So the probe's coming down and start seeing subcooling in a second. As that uh, hot line down there finally starts. Uh, Start getting uh, accurate. I see some soap cooling now. So, starting to tick up. Of course, these charge not for soap cooling when it's a piston to super heat. So, as long as it's close, we're good. It could be as early as this weekend that I change my uh, air handler out in the attic and, and slap the new condenser in over here. And one thing I'm probably going to do is turn this unit, bring the refrigerant lines over. I hate how they shove everything in the corner like that. Of course, then I have all this junk over here. <laughs> So, yeah. Yep, all right. 36 superheat dropping and three, four degrees subcooling. Superheat's probably gonna continue to drop as it runs, so it's good. Good enough, anyway. The actual liquid line temperature is 77 and dropping. 34 super heat. It'll be under 30 before we get 60, going on 60 degrees sub cooling. So, the charge, refrigerant charge hasn't lost anything, but it's just not, you know, it doesn't have a, t a thermal expansion valve to adjust, of course, to open up and get that coil cold, you know, and, and when you have a lot of load. So, doing what a stupid piston system does just sucks ass on the super heat back to the compressor. Until the uh, until the load starts getting in check. Yeah. Down to 24 superheat, eight degrees subcooling. I mean, it's actually going to be golden. But up to 74 on that suction. It's actually working uh, very well. I got any problems cooling? 18 degrees, 17 degrees superheat. Oh yeah, it's gonna be beer can cold any second now. That means that suction is dropping like a rock. 59 degrees there, 58, 57, oh yeah. 14 superheat, 9.5 subcooling. We're good, we all good. All right, well, I won't have to worry about, I uh, almost dropped that bomb there. Don't have to worry about messing with that damn freaking TXV anymore. Uh, until I get the sucker uh, swapped out. So, anyway, there you have it, guys. The TXV rig job actually lasted whatever it was. It was weeks. It lasted. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and all that stuff.
catch you guys later.